Hi there. Bonus equipment review. Today we're going to look at a particular holster, the SOB holster. Now, appendix position, which is roughly the one o'clock position uh, on the belt, uh, has been uh, around for quite a while. And I actually uh, used it. I had a holster called a GEM uh, from Paul Evers, Holsters Unlimited, many years ago. <clears throat> and I used it um, quite a bit and, and I liked it. It was, uh, it was a really good holster. And it, um, it was an on the belt holster design. And since then, uh, it's, it's kind of become fashionable for the appendix position with an internal holster, an internal fit holster within the belt uh, has, has uh, gained very uh, wide acceptance in, in the shooting world. And we'll just have a look at some of the pros and cons of that. The first uh, thing in favour of the appendix position, whether it's on the belt or internal fit, is it's to the front of your body and it's in a position easily accessed by your hands without any major body movement, any big signature for the draw. If you have to do a surreptitious draw, which some situations may dictate, it's very easy. And it's also easy to protect the weapon. It's in your field of vision, basically, so you can see anybody trying to grab it and you can easily defend it with your hands. Holsters that are uh, in the FBI position, for example, um, are vulnerable to attacks from the rear. Another point uh, about it is that it uh, fits in very well with certain lifestyles. So uh, against um, the considerations are, if you wear a jacket opened, then the uh, natural window of the jacket in the front of your body, particularly as you're moving or if, if the wind blows, can expose the weapon. Uh, so it has to be really covered by a closed garment whether it's a zipped up fastened jacket or if it's some, some sort of, of loose garment over it. Um, and this really alters the type of draw. You, you can't really do the um, coat clearance draw with one hand. Um, so it, it does complicate the draw a little bit. Uh, and then the other big consideration is safety where if you're using, particularly using a striker fired weapon, uh, the reholstering uh, can be critical. If there's anything gets into that trigger guard, whether it's your finger or debris or clothing or uh, tags or cords or whatever, the weapon can fire and it's pointed right at the most vulnerable areas of your body. So a couple of the pros and cons. Now, Reholstering, um, you're going to be doing it a lot when you're training. Uh, every repetition will end in a reholstering, so there's going to be a lot of it happening. And of course, the more you do something, the more chances there are of a problem. Then when you add uh, more realistic training methods and stress and so on, this can compound the problem. And if you're doing all out training and you may be down in the dirt and so on, debris can get in to, to the holster and uh, cause a problem. The, the other thing is um, reholstering uh, it after an actual shoot. And this may have to be done rapidly. For example, in VIP protection, getting back into vehicles, getting the VIP away. Uh, you don't want to do this with a, a, a a live weapon in your hand as you dive into a vehicle. So reholstering uh, under stress at speed uh, is, is critical. So there are a couple of considerations. And if you're using a striker fired weapon, such as the Glock, then um, there's nothing, uh, to, there's no safety device to stop uh, 
the trigger being pressed if there's debris or etc in the way so that that can be a problem so as i say it's become uh, something of a fashion to have the um appendix position and really holster selection should be based on uh, your lifestyle uh, and your body type there are body types that don't lend themselves to appendix position and there's lifestyles that don't lend themselves um, but if it uh, if it lines up that it's a, a, a sensible choice for you then the appendix position uh, may be the one you want and like anything lots and lots of uh, dry practice first to really get the repetitions so that you're safe doing it now another solution is a particular holster the the uh, sob holster which is this one uh which was designed by um john mcphee who was known as the sheriff of baghdad now john mcphee was a sergeant major in delta and he was operating in iraq at the time of baghdad swat when the tier one units were going out numerous times in a night hitting targets and getting into lots of gunfights it, it really was a very busy time for them and uh, that's where he got his nickname the sheriff of baghdad because he did a lot of that kind of operation and he designed this holster and it solves the problem to a large extent by having it's it's um, a ripcord type design and as you'll see later uh, the holstering is done outside the body the reholstering and the muzzle uh, correction the trigger is completely covered so um, as as the weapon is reinserted into the waistband the trigger can't be actuated so this is done outside and it's just a, an idea if you have been rolling around in the grass prone or um, under cover or so, so on glance into the holster check there's no debris in there before you, you reholster so that, that's just a, a consideration there is a design i've seen of um, a kind of uh, similar type of holster but not from uh, sob uh, and its muzzle is exposed now I, I wouldn't advise that because if you're going to be doing any kind of training the weapon heats up and you're going to be putting a pretty hot muzzle into, into the inguinal fold of your body and it, it's going to burn you uh, and it, it's going to cause you to jump a little bit okay so um i made a video uh evaluation of the uh, sob holster when i first got it in uh, the united states and that's what follows this so enjoy Okay, uh, I'm working with a new holster which just arrived, which is the um, Sheriff of Baghdad design for AIWB. It's an internal appendix holster. It's carried in the front position and it's affixed to the belt by a cord loop with the Glock 19. I like to have a slight angle on the drawer in this position 
Some people like it to be a vertical draw. The technique, whatever your method of uh, clearing the garments, in this case we're using the, the rip to here, the hand goes in, requires the grip. You can get a fairly solid grip by driving your thumb decisively behind the weapon, secure, then you do a forceful extraction and the holster falls clear, uh, the holster falls clear you then do a normal rotate and extend to target. To reholster, and this is one of the primary points of this weapon system, you then take the holster and hold in this flange here. As you reinsert the pistol, your muzzle doesn't cover any part of your hand. Also make sure your foot is out of the way so no part of your body is in the line of the muzzle. The trigger guard's now covered. Nothing can impede the trigger and you just do a return into your belt.